Community drum circles held throughout Long Island beaches and here at Robert Moses State Park are where people come together in order to share their spirit for life through percussion and dance. Stephanie Zeems, known to the circle as Soul Fire, leads today's interactive rhythm session. The drum circles are just a really cool way of bringing people together and I love to dance. I, I dance more than I drum. And sometimes in the beginning, it's really hard because, you know, you're just you're listening to this person, that person, and all of a sudden it gels and then you're just, you're feeling it. And then it's like, what happens is we all become one and it's really beautiful. Attendees enjoy the time to express themselves freely. We're celebrating uh, people coming together, even if you don't know each other. And what we're doing here today is a great example of community, you know, it's just people showing up to celebrate themselves, to be in nature, and to learn something new. For Soul Fire, the drum circle and dance is a way to express how far she's from her past. From her birth in an upstate correctional facility to a mother she never knew, and a father who had no presence in her life. Placed in a foster home, she was adopted by the Zeems family at four years of age on Long Island. My adopted uh, parents never had much information about me. They said they didn't know, the adoption agency didn't know, and I never knew my nationality. I didn't really know anything about me, and I was adopted by a family that all had blonde hair and blue eyes. I always felt like I never fit in, and I felt like something was missing from my life. So after I had my daughter, I wrote to the adoption agency in Brooklyn, that's where I was adopted from, the Guardian Angel Home, and they sent me a letter. It was about two pages of everything that they had in my file. It was pretty emotional when I got the letter. I, I cried a lot for days. My mother, I never knew her. She gave me up at birth. She um, was apparently in a prison upstate New York and addicted to heroin. They didn't say the, the word, but they said that she used sex to get drugs. And um, she was in prison when she gave birth to me and um, gave me up. And I was in a foster home f until I was adopted about four and a half years old. So far, I graduated from high school, a major university as a finance major, but her repressed trauma left her life in turmoil. She loved helping others, so she volunteered helping people with physical disabilities, and she even tried playing sports and bodybuilding, all in an effort to overcome her past. Good inhale, center, and exhale, other side. She believes she found her true calling to heal herself and others through the practice of yoga. When you're practicing yoga with the intention of healing yourself or the intention of um, tuning in and tapping into your higher self or something within you that you're looking for, then it happens. It ha you, you find that faster with yoga. It's like, um, it's a combination of the physical with spiritual, the mental, because you have to train your mind to be in the moment and to be present and not wander off. And um, it really helps you to connect to um, that wholeness that you already have within you. You can bring both hands to the ground center your hips and come back to downward jog. Her experience with personal pain has helped others through yoga. She's been through some crazy stuff. Uh, not too many people can say that they've been through what she's been through. And, uh, and, and she's, uh, she's come out the other side. And uh, she takes those lessons and applies them to other people. In 2013, she legally changed her name from Stephanie Zims to Soulfire and chronicles her life in a book titled Fearless Freedom, Becoming Soulfire. When it finally was published, I woke up in the middle of the night in complete panic. And I said, what did I do? Oh my God. I, and I was like, I can't believe it. Like the whole world can now read about my story. And I f was freaking out. But then I said, it's too late. You know, you got to do this. It's starting to get a little easier to talk about. And, but when, I, when someone, the first person who bought my book, I actually said to them, you don't have to read it. Like, what did you say? I said, you don't have to read it because that's how scared I was of sharing my story. 
For yoga classes, workshops, and a copy of her book, Fearless Freedom, Becoming Soul Fire, go to IgniteYourSoulFire.com. For Push Pause in Babylon, this is Archie Snowden.